Hello again, this is the last in a series on radioisotope uh, dating. Uh, we looked at carbon-14 dating, which is uh, the most common and probably the most uh, the, the most heard of, um, but only is, accu is accurate only to about 20,000 years, 20 to 50,000 years. Uranium lead dating uh, can go back much further and um, uranium uh, to lead decays via a series. So we, we start with uh, uh, uranium 238, so that's its, its mass number there, and it decays via alpha decay uh, to thorium and thorium 4 mass number of thorium uh, now of course we know an alpha particle has uh, two neutrons and two protons so um, we can see that we've got a decay there that uh, that holds for the uh, uh, conservation of mass number now the interesting thing about that is uh, it has a half-life of uh, 4.4, 4.5 4 by 10 to the 9 years. Now that's a long time um, and with regard to the Earth, um, well, that's about the age of the Earth, 4.5 billion years. So, but that's, uh, this is uranium lead dating, we're looking at uranium to thorium. Now that's the longest in uh, a, what we call a decay series. So, uh, whoops, this is a decay series. And I'm not going to go into the details too much, but we have uh, further decays. Um, so the thorium decays because that's unstable via beta decay. Um, and, and we get to uh, uranium again and, and, and eventually via uh, several decays. Uh, in, in fact, there's, there's probably around 10 types of decay, um, or sorry, there's lots of alpha decay and lots of beta decay, but uh, there's, there's 10 daughter nuclei uh, and we end up with, um, and I'm just going to skip a few steps, so I'm going to say that this is, um, I'm going to say skip some decays, and that's a lot of decays here, and we end up with lead, and its mass number is 206, and that's stable. Now that's uh, very useful, particularly this half-life, uh, and I'll just specify that that's its half-life there before we move on. Now uh, all rocks on Earth contain uh, uranium and um, in, indeed also the moon and uh, meteorites and that sort of thing contain uranium so we can use this dating method to date uh, moon rocks and, and in fact moon rocks have been dated by this uh, method uh, meteorites have been dated by this method um, other this this long half-life here can be taken to be um, because it takes so long for this decay to occur we can take a sample and that sample might be uh, let's say that's a moon rock okay rock of some sort anyway if we measure the amount of uranium and we measure the amount of lead Oops, inclined to right nil. Plum bum. Um, and, and we take a ratio of those two. Um, we can we can determine the age of the rock um, based on this this very long half life here. So 
after a certain amount of after a, a, a 4.5 by 10 to the 9 years about the age of the Earth or the age of the solar system thereabouts. Um, what it says is half of the original uranium 238 will be left behind, and 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 all of these other decays that occur in this decay series will be left behind in certain uh, ratios, certain very set ratios, and that can help us determine the uh, the the uh, the age of the rock. Um, so we have some accuracy in determining uh, uh, much older um, rocks. And there's another way that, that does rocks, of course. Uranium is contained within rocks. Um, we have this also here for determining um, or, uh, organic tissues. Potassium, argon, dating. Now, potassium argon dating um, is this is a naturally occurring isotope of potassium, K40. Mass number again is 40, um, and and um, it comprises so uh, K40 comprises approximately uh, one atom in 10 to the four, so one in 10 to the 4 atoms will contain, uh, will be, beg your pardon, everything else is just a stable isotope of potassium, our common potassium that you throw in water and uh, causes all sorts of chemical reactions. Um, so how does this work? Uh, potassium argon decay. Well, this one's quite interesting. We call it electron capture. Now, say this is our potassium nucleus. Okay. And we have an electron, and I like to think of electrons as blue. The electron exists in this inner shell here. And she's quite small, of course, about one two thousandth the size of a proton in that nucleus. And we call this electron capture. And what happens is that electron is captured by this nucleus, by its own nucleus in this in this atom of potassium forty. Um, and and a proton One of those protons becomes a neutron. By this electron capture, and and liberates a neutrino. And that's complicated. This is a type of beta decay. Okay, so um, and what results is, and I'll do the, uh, oh, I've run out of space here. Um, now I'll do the the chemical formula here. So we have uh, uh, potassium plus our electron. We have a reaction reaction occur, a nuclear reaction occur, and we have argon and argon, a stable isotope of argon, and a neutrino liberated. Sorry about my neutrino there. Okay, uh, actually I'll redo that. For the physics students in my class, uh, they'll recognize that better. Okay, and with a half-life, of 1.28 by 10 to the 9 years. And so rock samples with this uh, with this potassium and this argon contained inside um, can, 
can help us determine things much much older uh, the argon we can assume that there was no argon in the in the sample whatever it may have been when it formed if it's a rock uh, then it certainly would have bubbled out as a gas and would would not have existed at the formation of the rock um, so knowing the ratios of of this potassium 40 and this argon 40 we can determine the age of the sample this is um this is useful also in determining because living organisms take up uh potassium uh contain lots of potassium in fact uh we can determine the age of uh, of of organic relics also and the earliest humanoid relics have been dated at uh, about 5.5 million years um, via this method by via this potassium argon dating method um, thanks for watching